Right. So, um, yeah, let's just, uh, uh, good morning to all those who joined in just now. So let's, um, let's just spend some time just thanking the Lord, you know, um, and thank the Lord for all the uh, things that have happened, for his faithfulness, for his hand of protection, for the way he has led us and guided us. And, uh, um, and uh, yeah, and one thing that we see, you know, um, we were just looking at it in the last class uh, that, uh, um, you know, in Second Corinthians uh, chapter 1, and uh, Paul testifies, uh, you know, chapter 1 and verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. And, and then on, you know, he, he goes on to um, encourage the believers. Um, but uh, so this is a beautiful thing that uh, that God comforts us in all our tribulation, in all our tribulation, right? Uh, and tri tribulation meaning, you know, the, uh, you know, it's like pressure, hard pressure. Uh, the Greek word "clipsis" gives the picture of uh, you know, something, some weights being play, placed and pressed down, um, uh, pressing down heavily. So, a God who comforts us. In 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 fact, uh, it says uh, in verse three that the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, right? The Father, the source, the originator of uh, mercy, compassion, and comfort, uh, coming alongside. So he not only does he, um, not only is the source of mercy, but also he draws alongside. Um, yeah, uh, one Second Corinthians chapter one, chapter one, three to five. Yes, thanks, uh, Avni. So, um, so who draws alongside and comforts us as well, right? So we have him as uh, as the source, as the originator, and um, and you know today uh, being the first day of the month. Um, of this month. Let's just thank God for being that source of comfort for the one who drew us to himself and comforted us and the one who's the source of uh, uh, all compassion and so on that that we may also, you know, in our ministering, in our speaking, in our proclaiming that we may also comfort those uh, who also goes through go through the same kind of uh, tribulation right and that's the objective that we pass on that comfort that we receive as uh, as vessels we receive and then we also pour out that comfort on others as well right so so let's just pray and then we'll start father we we thank you for this day we thank you for this new month that you've given us god we thank you that um, uh, when we look back at the months that have gone past, the nine months that have gone past, oh God, we, we just want to give you thanks. Our hearts are so full of uh, gratitude and praise, Lord, for your, your, we have experienced your hand, your leading, your grace, your mercy. Father God, we thank you that your mercy has been so new every morning. Your grace has been so abundant that you lavished upon us, God, extravagantly, God. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you, Lord. And uh, Lord, as um, as a, a gathering of believers, God, we praise you. We bless your name. And uh, and Lord, we thank you that we are recipients, Lord, of your mercy and recipients of your comfort, Lord. And this morning also we pray for those who are going through such kind of uh, pressure, uh, uh, pressing down, uh, burdening. And uh, I just pray, God, that... Uh, that even as uh, as we go through, as some of us are facing that, uh, we are also candidates of uh, that comfort. We are also candidates for that mercy. And so, God, we thank you that you are so faithful to bring in that, bring uh, draw alongside us with your compassion and with your comfort, Lord. And I just pray that that will be so tangible for some of us, for those of us who are going through that. And even as we receive, Lord, so also, I pray that we will give, we will pass on that same comfort and mercy, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay. So, um, praise God, Beth. Um, glad to hear that. Um, awesome. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, you know, October Normalism, let's just redeem the time, walk, walk circumspectly, as uh, scripture also exhorts us, and continue to be who he has called us to be, right? Amen. Okay, so let's um, let's continue it, uh, with our uh, uh, sermon presentations. Okay, so uh, let's... Um, yeah, we uh, we looked at ministering God's word and also expecting God's word uh, in ministry, and uh, and the fact that uh, when we uh, in in our expectation of uh, fruit uh, in response to the ministry of God's word, uh, we also facilitate um, people to respond. Okay, so we looked looked at that, right? So um, so in response to the message, we facilitate people to encounter God, to, to receive from God. And, and there are many ways by which we can do this. So I'll just share, a, a, you know, a few and, and then we'll get on with the presentations. Right. So okay, the, the first one is of course, um, you know, uh, what we, uh, what we know and what uh, we call as the, uh, we term it as the altar, as an altar call, you know, as an invitation to to come forward and uh, to be prayed for right now it, it uh, an invitation to come and to be prayed for uh it could be for an altar call for salvation to receive christ it can be an altar call for uh, a recommitment to renew our commitment to christ it can be for believers it can be an altar call for receiving prayer for specific needs and maybe it could be to receive prayer for uh, you know for restoration of uh, things happening in the family maybe for harmony in the family uh, or it could be a restoration of things lost like whatever the enemy has come to steal kill destroy um, you know the maybe that's just on those lines so it, it could be an altar call for various um, you know various uh, topics uh, so it could be a call uh, to respond in faith, right? To make a commitment. Now, um, you know, most often it is, uh, you know, it's it's either uh, an altar call could be to, you know, to to raise one's hand, right? To raise one's hand uh, to indicate that yes, um, you know, I I make this decision. Or I I am going through this, therefore you know I I need prayer. So um, it can be you know you know on those lines. It can be to raise one's hands. It can be to say kneel where you are, stand where you are, uh, and and of course we need to be sensitive, not to embarrass people, not to you know do that, but under the leading of the Holy Spirit, uh, we we you know we for us sometimes you know we also need to be bold right to to take that you know we sometimes we it is possible that we hold back saying oh, what if nobody responds you know maybe it's um it's something like uh, you know we want people to stand up or you want people to put your know, put their hands up or um you want people to come forward and yeah the thing is uh, what if what if nobody does that you know um but the question to ask is you know what if there are people, you know, what if there is this one person um, and uh, what if, you know, it's uh, that person needs to make uh, that commitment or that person needs to be facilitated to encounter God, to make that decision. Uh, now, now I, I don't know how much of this is true, but apparently when Billy Graham gave his life to Christ, he was probably the one person, or only one person who responded that day to the altar call. You know, uh, and it was, uh, I think it was a Baptist church, or and I forget the details, but um, he was the one, only one person, you know, who responded to the, uh, the to the message, to the altar call, and uh, he gave his life to Christ. You know, uh, you can you can check out the facts, and maybe he was one of the few, or I, I but I, 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 I remember reading that he was, you know, there's this one person who responded, and that was, you know, Lee Graham. So, um, you could correct me, you know, if uh, check the facts and correct. But but the thing is this, you know, there, maybe there is one person, and uh, and as you shared the word, and 
and the spirit of god is prompting you to uh, go in that direction and do that and that one person you know could be uh, an influencer could be a chosen vessel who will you know move nations move continents uh, with the message of the gospel right so um, so just go with it and what if no one responds well it's okay it's absolutely fine you know it's uh, um, maybe people are holding back maybe people are you know praying that prayer in their hearts you know we don't know right so even if um, uh, even if there's no one that's okay you know but you're just being you know we are just being obedient to the to the call of god and uh, we are just being obedient to um, to uh, and being faithful and uh, enabling uh, people to come to a decision right uh, and i'm typically talking about maybe an altar call for salvation or uh, you know a call of that nature right um another way is um, also to pray a you know i'm just putting it here what is called you know you, you pray a general prayer right so um, an altar call would necessitate somebody to take that step and make a decision put their hands up stand up come forward uh, uh here it could be a general prayer you know we prayed and um, and uh, uh, sorry you you completed uh, sharing the uh, message saying the sermon and uh, we pray a uh, a general prayer of thanksgiving uh, and pray uh, as led by the spirit of god for the uh, spirit of god to touch you know people in the congregation maybe it was it's for the entire uh, entire um, you know audience entire gathering that the lord would touch them the lord would visit them the lord would manifest uh, his power uh, you know in their lives and so on so it could be a very general prayer okay um and you know thirdly it could be um be a, you know, a pro- prophetic prayer and also uh, you know inviting people um in in response to uh, the you know the uh, the way the lord is leading right? he, he maybe he gives a word of knowledge okay um uh, so it's a uh, rather than call it prophetic prayer I, I probably we should call it prophetic ministry right so uh, maybe there is a word of knowledge okay so word of knowledge the lord reveals uh probably uh, some uh, it's a information it's a word uh and maybe it is for an individual maybe it is for a group uh, maybe it is for sometimes it's for the entire gathering right okay maybe the entire collectively the church is going through a season and it's a word of knowledge now um like based on what how or how the lord is leading right uh, there are several ways to do this you could of course uh, if you know for sure that there is a person in the congregation uh, to whom this applies right so we could uh, either call that person out and say the lord this is you know this is something and you could of course test it you know uh, and ask okay is is this something that's happening or you know as long as it's not very sensitive information right so of course we've studied in the prophetic uh, uh, about this so uh, we could respond in that uh, or we could facilitate in that manner minister in this manner or right? call out and say you know, uh, you know for that person point out and say leave that this is what uh the lord is uh, doing or or you can ask a question you know is this so uh, i believe the lord wants to do this you know and it can word of knowledge can also be a, a you know something some kind of a physical condition uh maybe a illness maybe a, a, a difficult time uh, that they're going difficult situation that they are facing etc um so uh, we just make sure that it's not you know very sensitive something that will you know break the person which we can do privately right uh, otherwise we can just pray uh, and um, call out the word of knowledge and pray so it could be for a person we we identify they know for sure and then you you know you pray um the uh, otherwise it can be the word of knowledge can also be uh, you know we don't know the identity of the person right or people it could be for one it could be for many but we uh, we we uh, 
speak it out anyway. You say, I believe, or we believe that uh, uh, there could be, you know, this kind of a, uh, a scenario that uh, some of you are going through this, or maybe there's one person who's going through this um, kind of a, uh, this challenge or this is what has happened or on the way to church, this is what happened to you. Uh, you know, could you please, uh, is there anyone who's, you know, who's, uh, uh, who can testify to that, who is, is yes to that and we would like to pray and minister, right? Now, you know, uh, the question is, you know, why should we, why should we ask, uh, you know, why should we ask in public? Uh, can't we just pray? Yes, we can. Right. Yes, we can, and uh, sometimes you know it's the um, it's like uh, let's say you know doing an outreach, and it's like a very um, you know uh, you know people from different worldviews are there, and you have an opportunity to present and minister, and well, there you could just simply say you know I believe that God you know this is what it is, and God wants to bless, and you can go there uh, and and do that as well, right? So um, so what what why do we you know want to specifically call out and say, you know, identify and ask people to respond. Well, uh, what happens is that when we respond and when we, let's say there's a word of knowledge and then when when I respond, there is also faith being built up and I'm responding to the word, I'm being obedient to, uh, or I'm taking that step um, I'm making that, uh, I'm, uh, I'm placing myself in a, uh, in a, um, right, I'm, I'm mean, putting myself in a place of receiving further from God, right? And uh, and faith rises up in me as well when I respond. So so that happens. Um, so we we do that, right? So we ask people to respond, and then we pray on those lines. Um, we could also, you know, in line with that, similar to an altar call, maybe if there is something like. A, you know, something to do with healing, physical healing or uh, healing of any nature. Uh, we could even, uh, if it is okay, right? Uh, we could even call the person forward and pray. Okay, um, we know specifically when it comes to you know prophetic ministry and the word of knowledge, the the fact that the Lord uh, shares that is that he he doesn't he wants to make a change, right? About uh, that situation or that condition. Now, the change could be immediate uh, or it could be a path of recovery, uh, but the Lord wants to intervene in that, right, in that situation. So um, we we call out and uh, we can call the person forward and pray as well, right? So uh, we could do, it can be a, a prophetic uh, ministry time, uh, right? Okay, so um, these are just some general uh, uh, categories. It can be an altar call, it could be a gentle prayer, or it could be a, a time of prophetic ministry. Okay, um, well, we know that certain, uh, you know, when it comes to certain uh, certain messages, um, maybe it's just good to just close with prayer. You know, there's uh, nothing specific, but um, you know, but as a as a ministry and as a church, what we decided is that we will always, you know, give that time, um, uh, and it could be uh, we just flow with the uh, way the Spirit of God is leading, and we will all we will just kind of dig in, dig deep, and um, and minister in the prophetic. Okay, so um, so that's you know we're very surprised how the Lord leads and what the Lord reveals and what it shows. So um, so it's it's good for us as ministers to be open. I say, and and not really have the mindset right. Okay, I finished the message now. Let me just pray and you know and close. Uh, so we are we for us also. It's a step of faith, right? As we are ministering and we're saying, okay, God, now what? Uh, what more, Lord? What is it that you want to do? And and we see um, the Lord opening up, uh, you know, uh, and ministering uh, in ways that uh, we would have missed out if we had just you know ended it there. Okay, so um, of course it depends on the kind of um, uh, kind of fellowship, the kind of gathering that we are in. Like for example, I was uh, sharing with the youth group, and uh, and uh, uh, but I was having a conversation with the leader before the meeting itself. So I was just sh sharing and uh, on certain things, and I, then I asked, you know, um, you know, can we have communion? Can we have communion? And uh, I'll just talk about. Um, I think this was. Um, yeah, this was around Easter time, uh, you know, Resurrection Sunday, 
so it was uh, i think around that time so uh, so i was just asking you know uh, can we uh, oh it was actually during the lockdowns so it was online uh, so uh, asking uh, can we have communion uh, is it okay can we do that now they come from a, a background where uh, you know communion is taken only in, ch- in church you know in in the church uh, building uh, and so on so and by the pastor right so uh, so they they were kind of hesitant and is and, and the youth leader said um, i think it's better that we you know we don't get into that and and that's fine right so uh, i we really wanted to pray for breakthroughs healings whatever and you know with the proclamation of the cross um and then you know uh, it's a powerful proclamation right so but then uh, they were not okay with it so we we kind of skipped that so so you know all this all the methods by which we close now some we we just uh, are mindful of uh, and and what the leadership is uh, okay with uh and then go with it right and um, there there's so much more freedom right when we do that and uh, and we do it in a manner that is uh, god honoring we do it in a manner um that's uh, you know that's uh, um where people are being edified rather than um uh, being broken right okay any any questions anything uh, further that you'd like to share on this um no questions okay so um so uh, i know there are few of us like uh, who are you know who are who, who regularly minister and so on so um, so just want to encourage you to take that uh, i mean if you are already doing this that's great uh, but uh, also to um, you know to take that step of faith and uh, you know push into this when you when you close right post the sermon um, when you are ministering um to do that and allow the spirit of god to to minister to move uh, among the people um yeah to to just open up that time uh, and invite god to touch people's lives just want to encourage us to do that okay right um okay so we uh, Wednesday we had uh, Rose uh, share with us on humility um and just a couple of things Rose uh, from uh, what we were sharing um uh, obviously you know you 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 read it out you had the message in front of you but um uh, the thing is also to um to be able to you know to to be able to preach when you say preach we are communicating sharing and uh, you use your you know your outline as something to glands at refer to it from time to time and and I also you know and and just to preach it right speak it uh speak it out so that would be something to do it um uh, so d- i'm sorry i'm just clarifying did you uh, you said you would read it out so that's why you know i i thought i should share this uh, give this feedback um but did you also like you know speak it preach it um the outline pastor while yeah. i was talking yeah i was uh, i included the the lines from the outlines into the sermon so that was what guided the next thought and then the next thought and then the next thought yeah yeah but uh did you um like did you read it out or because you didn't have the camera on i'm just asking did you oh, read yeah, it I, out or, um, yeah everything was written down pastor okay 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 so that's uh, maybe that's another level for you uh, you know you could try it out where um, uh, because what happens is uh, when we like write out word for word it's a great thing and it's good because you're very accurate and you know you know and and you finished um, exactly you know 12 minutes i guess that helped um, uh, but also to move into you know the, the next thing of uh, preaching it and using it as a using your notes as a guideline something that you can refer to but you you know you actually look at the audience uh, congregation and uh, and preach it right i know we are doing this online so we have all these constraints but then to actually address uh, people you know make eye contact look at them watch their response and uh, do so right okay 
Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, so, Rose, do, do you want to share anything with us? You know, as you as you went about the preparation, uh, as you went about sharing, um, like any thoughts, anything at all, any learnings? Yeah, Pastor. I was um, the last time you already spoke about that. That I I just I I have to share what I went through, the experience that I had do, while doing that. Uh, sermon. So, before yeah. before everything else, Pastor, when you when you asked about the sermon title, um, it has already been in my mind about um, humility. So that was right away when you asked for it. I was like um, ready to to bring it out because I thought like this is where the Lord is leading me anyway. So I'll just better put it out there, and okay. then so. In during writing, Pastor, um, I haven't really done any preaching or anything like that. Um, I just face my life group, and that's about as far as preaching as I have done. But I've not really done this thing like most of you have already. So, um, firstly, I, I didn't know how to start. I didn't have a word. And so I just prayed to the Holy Spirit to how can I start, Lord? Where do I start? And immediately I had the impression of when, and he just said, just build on my word. So very clear, Pastor, he just said, build on my word. And immediately um, the, the topic of humility connected to the verse of um, God opposes the proud and um, mm. gives grace to the humble. So from there, Pastor, everything just flowed. And, okay. and it was... Surely not me. So yeah, definitely the help of the Holy Spirit. And as well as the outline pastor, it really helped. It really helped with the flow of thought and being, as, as the note said, being organized um, yeah. and not to stray because for every thought you would get lots of ideas, but then that would sometimes be out of topic already. So it really helped the the outline that you've let us do, and especially yeah. the the goal. Uh, what was that? The the very first uh, column that you were asking for. The, the expectation. Yeah, the what expectation the, that yeah. really helped. Yeah, okay. to to like have that uh, beeline on what 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 I need to to put out there. Okay. And so uh, after that, Pastor, I just just always practiced. I recorded right. myself um, talking oh, okay. mm -hmm. and uh, within the 12 minutes, I I've partitioned, I've divided the sermon uh, within those 12 minutes just to be sure that I've, I've put out there what I need to put out to every um, outline topic uh, that oh. I had. So, yeah, Pastor. And so the goal for me was when writing that was um, not just, uh, to to put into words that could be understand un, understood by believers, new believers, and even the non-believers. So I chose the words mm. that could be understood. Yeah, oh, okay. that's master. Thank you. Yeah, I think that was evident in uh, the, the way you presented and the language that you used, um, the words that you used, and the phrases. Uh, that would be yeah. it. Would be um, yeah. It would strike a chord with the non-Christian uh, audience as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Thanks, Rose. Um, uh, yeah. Does anyone have a feedback? Like, if you if you wrote down anything, um, if you have a feedback, uh, just one thing probably uh, you could share, uh, as Rose was sharing in last class. If you made a note of it, or um, um, okay. Yeah, so, uh, so from what you shared today, uh, Rose, the takeaways, of course, you started with prayer, you waited on the Lord for the direction, and especially the start, what you should build, you know, how you should start, that was uh, good. And then also some practical things like, uh, you know, you recorded yourself and you, uh, you know, you uh, heard and then timed yourself and, and uh, really divided the message uh, so that it fits into you know 12 minutes and so um, yeah so all those practical things so so good learnings take away for all of us so that's good um yeah that's true uh 
yeah back into a short time it was easy to follow yeah uh oh, one of one of the things that i wanted to share uh, was uh, rose you know um so you could um I, I know you packed in a lot you had a lot of share but you can um, choose maybe you know uh, what are those main things that you want to emphasize and those could be repeated right um you could take time and pause and you could uh, pause for emphasis and repeat that as well so that it stays with the here you know um like f like for uh, for me the that last illustration uh, about the car and you know uh, that that is there of course i i wrote down uh, but also like that if you could um pause and and make that statement and make it stay and stand out you know um highlight it emphasize it uh, repeat it uh, of course not repeat it too many times but then because we have only 12 minutes but that would stand out as well right yeah pastor um i just want to share one more thing pastor yeah. um at first like uh maybe you guys don't get it anymore but i just felt uh, I even wrote it in the comment that I was like shaking because mm -hmm. um, I was not that confident yet, even though I've practiced many times. But then in the middle of it, Pastor, you can feel, um, you know how you could feel the conviction in what you're saying? Right. So sometimes I pause and as if I was really in front of a real audience, mm -hmm. I paused and I, I felt that I want to get the message through pastor i guess you guys are always feel that when you do these things mm. yeah hey wonderful wonderful to hear that All right okay so um so uh, who'll share today anyone who's ready um no pastor i don't mind going okay, okay. see yeah um so if you're ready um we can start Right away. So we have Say. Say, where are you from? Sorry, I forget. Um, say, which? Yeah, yeah, um, kingdom. Sorry, uh, from? Kingdom, kingdom driven. Kingdom driven. That's your topic. Kingdom driven, is it? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, just a minute. Let me um, check it out here. Um, So see, have you uh, updated it in the... Yes, I did, sir. You have? You have. Okay. I'm just going through that. So... Okay. Um... Yeah. Okay. You, your name starts with... Uh, Ulua Say. <laughs> okay. I was searching to say. Okay. Um seeking god's kingdom and kingdom driven okay wonderful so yeah so we'll and say where are you from um so originally i'm from nigeria but i'm currently in canada in canada okay okay wonderful okay say so, uh you can start now let, let me know if you can see my screen Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay. Good morning to everyone. Um, for those who are my, on my own side, good evening. <laughs> um, so today we have topic here, Kingdom Driven. And uh, in the few minutes, I'll just be sharing um, from scriptures what we mean by Kingdom Driven. When we talk about the topic of Kingdom, on God's kingdom. It's a wide topic. So I'll be streaming basically on us, you know, seeking the kingdom and um, being motivated, which is kingdom driven in essence. It's basically to be motivated, to be propelled, you know, by the purposes of the kingdom, what God wants us to do here on earth. I have two opening scriptures. Um, I will join us to open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And um, basically, I just want to show us in relation to our topic, one of the desires of the Father. 
And Jesus communicated that when he was teaching the people how to pray. And in chapter 6, verse 10 of Matthew, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. It tells us very well that, as it is in heaven, to complete it, it tells us very well that for God's kingdom to find expression on earth, the will of God must first take place. The will of God must first be accomplished. And this was the desire of the Father when he created man, is that he wanted the kingdom of heaven to find expression upon this earth. You know, that everything of heaven, everything of God, you know, would flow through man here on earth. And man, through his dominion, would be an outflow of everything that represents the kingdom of heaven, you know, here on earth. Unfortunately, sin came to this world through man, and that plan, you know, was distorted. Though God tried so many times, you know, with various men through history, but in Christ Jesus, as the last Adam, he fulfilled it. And he didn't only just do it by himself, he also gave every one of us by dying on the cross, by bringing us into the kingdom of light so that the kingdom of heaven will find expression. But it's essential that until we come to the will of God, until we succumb and submit to the will of God, we would never see the manifestation of his kingdom. So the, we succumbing and submitting to his will brings the kingdom here on earth. And so we're enjoined to be kingdom driven. My second slide shows a treasure. You know, if I told you of an island that had this treasure that would make you, you know, never poor again in your life, you know, you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything else, you will be more than motivated to actually go there. You would do everything. You would maybe even sell everything you have. Because you know that by the time you go there, you don't have to walk again for, your, for anything. And that takes me to this passage in Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, verse um, 23. Matthew, sorry, Matthew, my apologies. Matthew 13, verse 44. Matthew 13, verse 44. It reads, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid everything. He hid, he, he hid it again, and then he, he, he went with joy and went to sell, he sold all he had and bought that field. You know, Jesus Christ was trying to paint a description of what the kingdom of heaven is. It tells us that, truly speaking, the kingdom has more value than the earthly treasures we have. More than our accounts, more than the possessions we have, our houses, the things we own, the things we even have. The kingdom of God is more treasurable. The kingdom of God is more valuable. And so if indeed there's so much value that Jesus Christ placed in the kingdom, then for every believer of Christ, we ought to be seekers of his kingdom. We ought to prioritize and put the kingdom first. I will go through some scriptures again just basically to stress on this importance of us as believers of Christ seeking and pursuing after the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 6, which is an excerpt of Jesus, popularly known as his Sermon on the Mount. You know, he said so many things and he came to this portion where he talked about we placing our treasures in heaven. He says, do not gather and heap up and store up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust and warm consume and destroy and where thieves break through and steal. You know, many will think, oh, maybe the Lord is telling me not to have any possessions here on earth. You know, don't, don't, don't have any savings. Don't make any investments. But that's not what Jesus was driving at. And we'll see as we go on. Basically what he was saying is that do not allow your whole life pursuit or life motivation be all about acquiring things on earth that we just place our values on the things that we want to have. You know, we pursue after everything that we 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 like. We like those things that 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 that, that, 
that glow, you know, the treasures, the gold, the silver. We're always after those things. And we forsake what is important. So Jesus is saying, don't make your whole life pursuit. Just be about the things you acquire. In verse 20, he says, but gather and heap up and store for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust nor warm consume and destroy and where thieves do not break through and steal. Rather, let everything in your life be about the pursuit for Jesus and his kingdom because he is the king in this kingdom. He is the one we are called to serve. He is the one we are called to serve the purposes of his, his will here on earth. And so how then do we lay treasures in heaven? How then do we bring the kingdom here on earth? It's by making everything about our life be about his kingdom. And then Matthew 26 verse 21 says that for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So the question I want to ask every one of us as believers in Christ is, what drives our lives? Is it the treasures of the earth? Or is it the purposes of God's kingdom? Because many times we only just think that, oh, we're just saved. And then, oh, we're just supposed to live here on earth looking forward to make heaven. But I want to tell us, based on Jesus' desire expressed in the way we ought to pray, is that we as believers ought to live our lives submitting to the will of God so that the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven will find expression here on earth. That is the desire of our Father. That is the desire of our King, of this kingdom. And so if our heart is on the purposes of God, it will show that we are kingdom driven. But if our heart, our mind is focused on what we want to eat, what we want to acquire, what we want to become, what we want to have, then it will show that we're earthly driven. It will show that we're only seeking after the pleasures of the earth, what we want and not what the Father wants. That guides me then to what's the balance, because sometimes we might think, okay, Shay, um, you want me to be heavenly focused. I have bills to pay. I have things to do. I have kids to feed. I have a wife to please. I have so many things. And the question then I ask is that, is, is Christ against us having an enjoyable life? Is Christ against us having finances, having uh, um, money in our account, you know, saving up for the future? And I will remind you of the story about the rich fool. You see, Jesus was not um, against, or God wasn't against him actually, you know, storing up, of having so much, working hard and all that. What, what he was not happy about was that he wanted to stop for himself alone, not thinking about what he could use his world for. He was only concerned about what he was going to enjoy. And what did God tell him? He said, you fool, your soul shall be inquired of you this night. For you have not been, you are not rich towards God. Paraphrasing. You see, everything we have in this life is supposed to be used for His kingdom, for His glory. And this is how we show that we're kingdom driven. I'll give you three scriptures to balance this out. First John 2.15 Do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Our love is supposed to be for God and for man. Nothing else should take our affection. Oh, I love my car. Oh, I love my house. Oh, I love my dog. That's very wrong as believers. We ought not to say that. We ought not to give our affections to the things of the world. Our love should be given to the, our Father, should be given to God, and should be given to men. It's our love that shows us, that helps us to be motivated by the purposes of the kingdom. It helps us to be driven by what God wants to do in our time here on earth. The next balance I'll give us is Matthew 6.33. And again, this is still part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. 
You know, he was talking about people being bothered about what they will eat, what they wear. And he came down and said to this verse, but seek, aim at, and strive after first of all his kingdom and his righteousness. In other words, prioritize his kingdom. Let everything be about our lives. Be first about his kingdom, our marriage, our finances, our career. Everything should be about his kingdom. Prioritize this first. And every other thing that we seek for, all the things we want, they would follow afterwards. So prioritize the purposes of God's kingdom. Seek his kingdom in everything. What is kingdom in anything we do should be the question we always ask ourselves. Another balance I'll give us is 1 Timothy 6, 11, 17 to 18. As for the rich, Jesus and Paul, my apology, speaking to Timothy, who was his protege then, as a young bishop, telling him, as for the rich in the world, charge them not to be proud and arrogant or contemptuous of others, nor to set their hopes on uncertain riches, but on God. And this is the emphasis. It says, who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment? charge to do good to be rich in good works and to be liberal and generous of heart ready to share with others and you can see my emphasis there is that rich and seriously provide for us with everything enjoying so god, god is not against our enjoyment but he's charging us to do good to be rich in good works this is how we show that we are kingdom driven when we use the things that God has blessed us with for kingdom purposes and for blessing the body of Christ and people around us. Because we communicate our love when we do good works. We communicate the value system of God's kingdom when we do good works. So these are those balances I've identified from scriptures. And I'll end with two examples of people who put their hopes and put the things of the world first and did not consider God's kingdom agenda on earth. And it's a lesson we need to learn so that we do not fall prey of this. Saul, for example, who was the rejected king, first king, God's first choice king, you know, he put his greed, he was greedy for the good things he was supposed to destroy in Amalek, when he was sent to destroy everything, which was the punishment against the Amalekites for what they had done to the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. And so God told Saul, go and destroy, through the mouth of prophet Samuel, go destroy every single thing. Don't spare anything, every single thing. God was specific, but Saul was greedy. Saul was arrogant. Saul was disobedient. He was rebellious. He left the choicest things. He left the good things. He left the, the, the fats, the, 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 the sheep, the good things, the gold. He left all those things and even spared the king. He neglected what God wanted. He neglected yeah. God's kingdom agenda. I'm sorry to interrupt, say, uh, that's 12 minutes done. But um, yeah, um, what yeah. is the other? Okay, Gehazi. Last, last example. The last example. Sorry to take your time. The last example was Gehazi who was more or less the son of the prophet Elisha, you know, he was kind of next in line to be the prophet over Israel. But again, he was taken away by the treasures, the silver and the gold of Naaman. He lied that he had been sent to come and collect it. And he took what ended up giving him leprosy. Because why he put his value first on the gold and the silver of this world above what God wanted for his life. I usually say this basically that Gazi lost his opportunity of having a quadruplet anointing. Because remember that Elisha had double anointing of Elijah. Maybe he would have also got a double anointing of Elisha and that of the double anointing of Elijah. Just, just saying in quotes. But one thing is this, is that he placed his heart on worldly treasures, pleasures, and lost his opportunity. 
So my encouragement for us all is, as believers in Christ, whatever the Lord has blessed us with, let us not be overtaken by those things. Again, God is not against us having all the good things in this life and enjoying. No, he's not. But he wants us to use everything for his kingdom and be driven every day by the purposes of his kingdom here on earth by submitting to his will and ensuring that everything is about him and his kingdom here on earth. God help us all to fulfill his will in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sayyid. Thank you so much. Uh, such a blessing. Thank you for sharing that word. Um, yeah, uh, I think it, it went a little beyond time. Uh, I think that's something that uh, all of us should be mindful of when we present that. We Maybe I, I can just give a reminder uh, with one minute to go, so that will help you wrap up things. I can do that in future. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, um, uh, so say, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll share the feedback in next class, uh, Wednesday, since we are out of time. Uh, and uh, But thank you so much. Uh, it was a, that was a very good presentation, very passionate preaching. Thank you so much. Okay, so enjoy your weekend. Uh, God bless everyone. We shall catch up again on Wednesday. Yeah, okay. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.